guys what is happening and welcome to this video so first of all please hit the like button please hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and share this video with your friends because they're going to want to see this because I'm going to portray this very simply today as we've got these two charts and this is going to be like a whiteboard and I got the idea from George Gammon you should check out some of the whiteboards he does simply fantastic so basically here is demand which we've got and then essentially we've got supply as well so basically with demand you're going to see obviously the demand has gone up and then we peaked and now we've come back down slightly and now we flattened out and now we've gone back up and I think we're seeing that double top which I've talked about previously and people think I'm some kind of nut because I'm calling a double top in the real estate market but it's a supply and demand market exactly like stocks you get the same patterns in all these markets believe me and it's a real pattern of people's behavior so anyway um we're now heading towards the second top, could go higher, it could also go lower and then fall. But the thing to remember is when it goes higher, it's still coming down. And that is really the fact. Now supply will be doing the opposite. So supply has been going down, it bombed out, went up slightly, and now again, it's going even lower in most cases because we're in the winter now most Canadian housing markets are seasonal so the supply is just so limited and the demand is just in way excess of what it normally would be. Now obviously um, you're going to see the springtime turnaround at some point and listings are going to start coming on probably January and the Bank of Canada could hike interest rates let's say around there. So then you see this supply just keeps increasing but the demand is going the opposite way. This is exactly how a central bank distorts prices because a distortion in prices basically means that eventually it's going to play out the opposite direction. So whether you believe the housing market is going to collapse or not is really not the case, but you should at least know that there is a very high probability, higher than 50% chance, that it will at least correct back down to the level it was before it started, of course, adjusted for inflation. And if you take into account the very high inflation that we're having right now, it's the prices are going to be higher in nominal terms compared to what they were before. Yes, but that's why we use real prices and we don't use made up prices. So real prices are adjusted for inflation. So obviously, let's say they hike here and supply just keeps increasing and then they hike again. And by then, you've got the prices, which will obviously, if demand is doing this, supply is doing this, essentially the prices have gone up. They plateaued. We had that double top. And now they're coming back down or they're going to go flat and then come back down. But either way, it's um, going to be interesting because if we get some of the hikes that the big banks are predicting, like hike after hike, you could see this really start to pick up steam where the supply just picks up. Because remember, the supply deficit that we had, it was fake. It was fake, guys. It was a fake supply deficit because in actual fact, the supply was caused not by randomness, it was cause, it was limited because of greed, guys. Greed, that's why it was limited. So when you think about these things, you have to kind of just be pragmatic, I guess. I think that's the right word. I'll have to check after it. If it isn't, who cares? But anyway, you just have to kind of be, um, I can't think of the word, but um, just think in theory, but for some reason I'm struggling to think of the word but you just have to be like that because you have to think logically about things and not be emotional because right now how many people how many people do you think got in here 
here, here. You know, they thought, oh, prices have come back. As soon as they start coming back, they get in here. And, you know, that's just a pure fact. That's going to that's gonna happen. And you know how they say the dumbest money is always last. Well, it, unfortunately, it's kind of true because these people buy up here, they could see this huge downside right here. And then they're going to be absolutely kicking themselves. And as for the people who moved to smaller markets, well, the smaller markets, they, if you, if you factor in, like, let's say this is a market, a small market like Windsor, Ontario, for instance, let's say the prices before it were around here. And then you saw this huge explosion because of people moving and whatever, and they grew by around about 30%, okay? So if you had a 30% increase in those prices, then that essentially means that the local market, if wages have actually been doing this in real terms, or, or in real terms it would be flat, it, well, actually it's negative, sorry, because inflation is so high. So, so wages are actually doing this, then that means the local market is not gonna be able to it's not going to be able to afford this. So essentially, once this demand, if you imagine the demand runs out and it starts going down, guess what? The prices, they have to come down. They have to come down. So that's basically what I'm saying. This, you know, it's theory, guys. It is theory of what goes on. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you got something from this video. If you did, please give the video a like. Please subscribe to the channel. It greatly helps us out. This, the videos we do, they're not all doom and gloom. They're not meant to be. I'm trying to sound the alarm here. And I'm also trying to educate people on markets. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace, guys.